Welcome to this key fact about how to pass the ACCA Strategic Business Leader exam from 2024. Now this exam is 195 minutes and make sure that you're aware that there will be 80 technical marks in there. So this means that for time management purposes I would like to divide 195 minutes into 80 marks and this means that for each mark I will need to spend 2.4 minutes to tackle each of the requirements in the actual exam. Now, this exam nowadays is with the pre-seen information to be released two weeks before the exam. And in the actual exam, there are usually three questions in there with four to five exhibits. So making sure that these exhibits, you will fully utilize them as the unseen information so make sure that when you're answering the exam questions not just put the theories in but more importantly to link your answer with the pre-seen as well as the unseen information there now in this paper 50 marks will be the passing mark 100 marks in total the remaining 20 will be the professional marks split into each of these five categories Analysis, evaluation, skepticism, commercial acumen, and communication mark. So let me explain them one by one. Firstly, if you're testing about the analysis skills, so make sure that you will crunch the numbers correctly, which means you will need to calculate some numbers and comment on it. If you're testing about the evaluation skills, so make sure in your answer, you need to be able to comment on the advantages and disadvantages of certain proposals with your conclusion. So that's very important. There. If you're testing about the skepticism skills, so make sure that you always question and to challenge what would be the missing information. There. That's very important as well. Or perhaps you need further information to make sure the strategy actually works when you are performing the assessment. So for example, we are not given the market share, we are not given the detailed cost information. Uh, there's no point in commenting whether or not that's efficient or that's uh, performing better ahead of the competitors. So you need these information, so you need to include them in your actual exam there. Now, commercial acumen simply means you need to be able to comment on the implication of this proposal and solve actions that you would like to advise the management to take. Okay, so that's very important there. So which means that in order to demonstrate that so you've got commercial acumen skill marks, you will need to demonstrate your business insights into how to assess the matter from a real world perspective. And of course, I'm sure that my previous analysis uh, would certainly help. Finally, the communication mark, so make sure that you get the format right. So for example, in the SBO exam, you may be required to use the report format, briefing note format, writing a letter, writing a press release, or even that you're required to draft the project initiation document. So make sure that you're aware of that. And of course, quite commonly seen in the actual exam nowadays, you're required to prepare this slide. Okay, so make sure you put the headings in, and then your description at the bottom, make sure they're ready. Now, to get these professional marks, from my perspective, these marks are quite subjective in nature. Because when we are marking your script, we will see whether or not the students can get the professional mark or not. And of course, related to communication mark, and that will be quite strictly adhered to, because we will need to see whether or not you get your format right. If you haven't got your format right, of course, you will never get these professional marks related to communication. However, to demonstrate that you've got ability to show your commercial acumen, evaluation, and somehow analysis, a bit of skepticism will be quite subjective indeed. And this is why I would like to advise my students for each point that you've raised, make sure that you include two out of these in your actual exam lab. So for example, for each point that you've made, make sure that you bring the implication in. So for example, so if I were to expand into a different industry, 
The implication would be, for example, we need cash, we need funding, we need support from our shareholders. So it takes time for us to do these sort of things, and this is what I mean by implications. And then, perhaps you will need to state the reasons behind it. So perhaps your view may be to support the action or against the proposed action. So for example, if you're supporting it, so for example, why are we going to be expanding our uh, market into the overseas one? Because we've got experience in doing that. But if you're against that, you will need to tell the examiner what would be the reason behind it. So for example, the proposed action is not viable because we lack of fund. Okay, so make sure that you always quote the reasons behind it. Or perhaps you will need to tell the examiner about the risks related to this proposed action is one. So what sort of things may easily go wrong? Okay, so you can tell the examiner about that. Alternatively, you can give an advice, a piece of advice to the examiner about in the short term and in the longer term, how can you do about it? So make sure they're ready. Okay, now for each point that you've made, Make sure that you include two out of these four in your point. I would say that these just to be the direction of your answer, which means picking two out of these four, for example, implications, reasons behind it, what be risks involved, and the advice you would like to provide to the company. However, you will also need the content inside. So this means that you will need to demonstrate that you've got the ability to link your answer with the pre-seen information and also the unseen information, which means in the form of exhibit, into your answer. Mix them them both, yes, you will see the quality of your answer has improved. So make sure that you will not just focus on the direction of my answer, but also the actual content inside, so you can get very high marks in this paper. So if you combine these two, you will see that you will get very good professional marks there. Of course, the general rule providing the professional marks would be, okay, dividing into four levels, not answering the question at all, zero professional marks, not so well, 33% of the professional marks, because each of category, each of these categories will be four marks. So make sure that, okay, not so well, 33% times by four. Quite well, 67%. Very well, <laughs> nearly 100% there. Okay, so uh, yes, it's highly likely that most students will get 67 percent out from that. So that's why the pathway for the SBL has been consistently more than 50 percent. And of course I would say that the SBL exam, uh, the syllabus, uh, has been published, but from my perspective there's no syllabus at all. Because although that we've got the official syllabus, however, when we are seeing the exam questions, they are just open questions, and the examiner and the examining team for this paper will be keen to see whether or not you've got the ability to demonstrate that you've got critical thinking. Critical thinking simply means that we've got the left-hand side, which means the direction of your answer gets you right, and the right-hand side, which means being able to link the pre-seen and unseen information to your answer to improve the quality. Now, of course, regarding the syllabus itself, yes, we need to set up a right strategy, which means how we're going to be helping the business succeed in what direction to go. Governance, which means making sure that the board of directors who will control the direction of the business would be appropriate. Risk management procedures, making sure that we minimise our risks to a certain extent, managing those risks properly uh, for different decision maker with different risk attitude so we can survive in the longer term. Making sure that we control the organisation and having it to audit and to make sure that it is going in the right direction. We've got the finance available so you can support our thought. 
We've got the leadership style right, so especially for M&A mergers and acquisitions after we combine with other entity, we are able to integrate both parties all together in a smooth manner. Making sure we focus on the change management and project management properly and using the technology, especially commenting on the uh, benefits and drawbacks of using the new technology. Now, my top tip for the SBO student is that never miss any requirements, otherwise you will see that the professional marks will be quite low. At the same time, there will be no best approach, okay, uh, because I would say that most exam questions are just coming from the examining team's imagination, something like that. So make sure that you will give the excuse to the marking team to award you marks. So how can you do it? Of course, get the directions right and bring the information from the unseen and pre-seen each and every time into your point. Now, I would say there will be quite a few common requirements that may be set by the SBL examining team. So for example, the benefits and drawbacks of the system and the impact of the weaknesses in the internal control on the organisation and how human resource management or talent management actually works and deal with any issues raised by the staff. So for example, there might be major customer complaints, so impacting on our reputation adversely and how we're going to do about it. And opportunities are threat regarding a new project there might be things to keep in mind when performing the change and project management and the differentiation between the project sponsor and project manager. And also, very importantly, evaluating financial and non-financial aspects of a given project, so where management accounting stuff comes in. And of course, as you can see, these are just open-minded uh, open questions. So there'll be no absolutely 100% correct answers for this. So my advice to you is that for each and every point that you write in the actual exam, make sure they bring the direction and the content right so you can demonstrate that you've got critical thinking and you can get very high marks in this paper. Of course, another tip for you is that if you're given 10 marks in this exam for this requirement, how many sentences that you need to write? Of course, 10 marks 10 sentences, no problem for that whatsoever. However, you are not required to write 10 different ideas. For 10 marks, for 10 sentences, if I were you, I would like to write five ideas with two sentences per idea so I can get very high marks in this paper. Because, as I said before, I don't believe that any student under exam pressure in this paper will be able to, for example, given 10 marks, I will have 10 completely different ideas. For each idea, I will use only one sentence to combine the direction and content all together to demonstrate my critical thinking. It's highly unlikely that I can see students can do that. So my advice to students would be that, of course, according to the marking scheme, one mark per point, but um, for each idea, we give two sentences so 10 marks, 10 sentences, so I would get very reasonable marks in this paper. Many students failed the SBO, of course, some of them not doing finishing the whole exam paper at all, but most of them write too much. Write too much does not necessarily mean that we are writing too many sentences, but writing too many ideas. So make sure that you avoid that trap. Right, let's read the examiner's report for the, for example, September 2023. For the first pre-scene that has been released by the examiner. And of course, the pre-scene material, for example, for September 2023, is the uh, airline company. And in December 2023, is the cloud service company. They are different. So each and every time before the exam, I will take you through to the deep analysis of the SBO pre analysis there. Now let's see the strength of many students there. Of course, time management is better because in the past the SBO exam is four hours. 
But now it's just to be 195 minutes, which means three hours and 15 minutes in total. And understanding the culture, that's good, because that's the question one that I've predicted in my present application correctly, okay, in September sitting. Many of my students pass this paper very easily. And using the precinct information, yes, you will need to use that. And uh, that's the strength of many students for the SBL for this exam sitting. However, there are quite lots of weaknesses in there. Firstly, simply using a precinct analysis, not the unseen, will be absolutely not enough at all. Because for real companies, as time goes by, they will need to face additional issues. And this is why we need to take into account the latest changes of a complete information there. At the same time, the application of a technical knowledge, lack of depth. For example, maybe the students were just to give the model, for example, the Porter's Five Forces, Porter's Diamond, given the definition of each element without applying that specifically to the pre-seen or unseen, which means the direction is right, but the content is wrong. So if that's the case then, it's highly unlikely that students can pass this paper. And of course, poor analytical and evaluation skills, which means that not with the right direction in the first place, sometimes with the contents right. However, in your point, you haven't linked your answer with the reasons or risks behind it. So make sure that you're ready for that. And of course, the calculations poorly done by students regarding the management accounting stuff. So, of course, in my SBL course, I will take you through to the whole pre-seen and unseen applications with the predictions done by myself. And at the same time, I will go through the management accounting, which means the most difficult areas uh, in this paper with you thoroughly. And you'll have no problems at all in passing this paper with my help. Right, I'm going to be stopping this recording now and best of luck with your upcoming SBO exam. APC, accounting for your future.